Hey, good morning. So I think I figured out what I have to do. Um, I thought I just had to click open the OBS software, but it turns out that I also have to go into something called the YouTube studio. And then I have to actually, you know, declare my intentions that I want to live stream. So I figured that one out. <clears throat> the next step is for me to figure out why there's a latency. So if you are looking up here, you no, know, let's do this browser here. Uh, I found a, uh, uh, a website called clocktap.com and every now and then I will just move over to clocktap and I will, uh, I'll show you what time it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, you, what, what's great about this is that you should also be able to see clocktap even though um, uh, that window is not active so that's that's pretty good and then if there's something i want to tell you then uh, i got a that's uh, and i suspect that there is a I suspect there is a latency issue still. <clears throat> I just, in fact, I just want to check that for myself. Final thing I want to say to you before I switch to full charts is bottoms up. Mmm, lovely. So I'm still running my uh, DAO positions and uh, my average is not so great anymore. I was short from 35,000, but I took some profit yesterday and then I put the position back on. I also have just a, a single unit of a NASDAQ position. And as you can see, I'm attempting to short Bitcoin and that is not going so well. So. Um, it's not a it's not a big loss, but it's a loss. I'll probably let that run for another day or so. <clears throat> Talking of Bitcoin, I want to show you something. Here's Bitcoin. <clears throat> and I never really realized that, but on a 15 minute chart, a Bitcoin chart is not unlike analyzing a DAX or a DAO chart. I think the issue here is that uh, the, there is a spread consideration, apart from the fact that it moves ferociously fast. <clears throat> You know, for example, if you if you if you take um, this is a let's see if I can uh, 
demonstrate this um, not sure how to do it no that's not what I want to do I want to have a single line or a frontal note I want a free line <coughs> Would you believe it? Uh, the broker I trade with is obviously my choice and I don't care who you trade with. Um, but I do use a broker called TD365.com. And one of the complaints that people have is that the charting package is not as good as others, which, you know, I, I do have some a, a degree of sympathy with. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's Q charts and they, I don't think they're so bad. But here's the thing. I don't use charts for anything else than looking at them. I don't draw lines. <laughs> so when I'm looking at the, uh, at, at the chart right now, I don't know where the things are because I have absolutely no need for it. None whatsoever. The, the only thing that I will be looking at are the actual candle formations itself. And then I'll have certain things that I'll be looking out for. So for example, what I wanted to illustrate to you right now is that <clears throat> In, in, my, in my world, whenever you have a, uh, a market that goes sideways for some time, especially on a slightly higher time frame, like a 15 minute chart. So, so this is a, a fairly standard um, uh, market is trending higher, slight retracement, trending higher. And now we have a um, a, a sideways retracement as well, or a trading range is the word I was looking for. Whenever the market ferociously break out of a trading range and then doesn't really fall, follow through for more than a bar or two, and then it comes down halfway below that bar where it broke out, and to me, that that's a that's a sell signal that that's for me the science way what well, that breakout failed and i think that we're headed lower and i don't really need a line to indicate that i just i just see it and uh, and that's kind of that's kind of it and these patterns they will work this is that's the thing about technical analysis technical analysis i once read has only got predictive power for the next two or three bars which is quite interesting because we think that we can uh, forecast into uh, way into the future but really technical analysis from what I have read is is only really has a predictive power for the next few bars and I'm not sure where you fall in this category but I have come to accept that no matter how much I research no matter how deeply I <clears throat> could just pause for a second here I want to show you something <coughs> there we are you can still see me that's all good and no I <laughs> I am not got sponsorship from Coca-Cola <laughs> uh, contrary to uh, comments so what you're, what you're seeing here is my way of, uh, of doing technical analysis. It's obviously this is a bit homegrown. So uh, take it with a pinch of salt, take from it what you want. But I like to uh, uh, print out the, the charts for a week. So this is the, uh, this is the FTSE index. And so here you have Monday and then you have Tuesday and then you have Wednesday and you have Thursday and then you have Friday and I've done that for the last 15 years now what I like about this is that very often when we <clears throat> excuse me very often when we come to work in the morning as traders we're thinking 
Oh Jesus, what is the Dow going to do today? It was down 470 points yesterday. Is it going to continue lower? Is it going to bounce? What's it going to do? And none of us will have that answer. We we can have a feeling of what it's going to do, but we don't know what it's going to do. And the, what I like to do as, as part of my involvement as a trader is to say, okay, yesterday was a, was a Tuesday. And so I will find times when the Dow has had a really bad Tuesday. And then I go over and I see, well, what happened on the Wednesday? So for example, um, today, my analysis said to me that there would be a high probability that we would rally initially but that rally would most likely fail. Now, I got the, the rally upwards um, and got my profits, which is, you know, I'm grateful for. But what I really should have done is I should have shorted the Dow up here. I want to show you. This is uh, up here, about here, about um, in this session here which is about uh, an hour into the European session after we had the rally. That's where I should have uh, sold short again for you. But uh, <clears throat> un unfortunately for you, I was battling with YouTube Studio and uh, I was battling with uh, uh, OBS software. So it's just a way of, um, you see, I, I, I think with something like this, it's a very healthy way of doing technical analysis because it gives you some perspective. You know, very quick, very often we are in a position and we and we think, oh, I better get out while I have still have my profit. And I, uh, if, if I hadn't done that kind of homework, I'm not sure I could have hold on to a position like this for as long as I have. But, you know, I'm making about $150,000 and, and that's happened over a <clears throat> that's happened over a two to three day period actually it's technically two days and that's a life changing amount of money and that would only that could only have come about by gaining a larger perspective so if I if I was going to and this is kind of turning into a, a lesson I didn't mean it to be like that but uh, um Sometimes I can't help myself and I just start teaching because I, I like to pass this on. I'm just going to do a disgusting drink now. I want to see the DAX. So in that context, on a 15 minute chart, the DAX would be a sell down here. We've had a breakout when that breakout failed. And then that means that once this 15 minute bar concluded, we technically should have been short the Dow. And that would have seen us go short, sorry, the DAX. And that would have seen us have gone short the DAX at the close of around 15,144. And the stop loss would probably have been up here at uh, 89 or 90 or whatever you want it to be. <clears throat> and if you think that that is too large a stop loss, then one thing you, you could have done for yourself, you could have said, oh, okay, here's a different perspective of it. I've gone from a 15 minute chart to a five minute chart and I got three tweezers here or tails or whatever it's called. So, well, Look, if we come up here, the chances are it's going to run another 20 points higher. So you may have said that I'm selling short here at 43, but I'm going to put my stop loss just above this bar here, which is the breakdown bar. So that would have had my stop loss at 73. <clears throat> so you, you have diminished your stop loss by 20 points, but obviously by diminishing it, your stop loss by 20 points. And this is something that 
we have come across many times in the Telegram channel. And that is that the, the curse has been, my stop losses have been too tight. Larry Pesavento once said to me that he would prefer to trade slightly smaller size with a larger stop loss because he felt it gave him more freedom to look at the charts dispassionately rather than being too hung up whether he was going to be on the right side of the market or not. Okay, <clears throat> it's a very individual journey. But anyway, I got these and I am looking over at uh, my other desk and I got 15 years worth. I'm, by the way, I'm going to share this on my uh, on the Telegram channel, but I had decided I didn't want to, you know, do it in piecemeal. So I wanted to collect all of them. One sec. <clears throat> so I think the best way of doing that, so for example, here's the DAX, but it's from 2009. And then you here you got, um, and here's the DAX again, but this one is from 2012. And I just wanted to make sure that what I gave you is, uh, uh, is accurate. So, right, see if we can uh, find some trades. So this formation here in the DAX is not the greatest in the world, but let me at least highlight it. That is that you, you have a market that is trending lower, then you get an attempt of holding it and the market breaks down. It breaks down on this bar here. But what's interesting is that the very next bar is then countering this breakdown. So if you got a close above this bar here, so you, let's say that the five minute chart closed above 15,133. In my book, that could warrant a buy signal. So just look out for that. <clears throat> I think what I love about what I think what I love about technical analysis isn't that to me, technical analysis is not what makes the money. Technical analysis is the, uh, the tool, like a, like a painter painting a beautiful portrait. The, it's not, the, it's not the, 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 the pencil and the colors that is going to make a masterpiece. It's uh, his own imagination, his creativity, his confidence. And to me, the sitting and studying charts is intellectually fulfilling but i'm fully aware that that can mask over the real issue of trading which is it's all about confidence it's about having an edge but having an edge i don't think is found in the charts as much as having the confidence in trusting what we are seeing on the chart 
So, um, my friend of mine, I think many of you will know, his name is Dr. David Paul. I, I can't rate David Paul highly enough. I used to share flat with him, so I also know he's a messy bugger. <laughs> um, but he is a delightful human being who once said, you know what, if my ability to trade my knowledge was there, then I would make much more money. What he was really saying is, and I think this is something that we can all agree with, that that <clears throat> if if I was able to trade every single setup without any kind of emotional luggage, I would have much better results. So if my ability to see something on a chart was equal by my ability to execute what I see, well, then my bank balance would be very different. Now, from my point of view, I feel that where I stand out in this world, and please, I don't mean that in an egomaniac point of view, but I think I have become aware, and I think I stand out in that sense, and I think I've become aware that technical analysis is a, is a very minor um, element of successful trading, and our ability to actually act in our own best interest is what sets us, us apart from the crowd. And the crowd is big, you know, you just look at, look at any brokerage. Um, you know, I, I could bring up a brokerage here. We could go to say, let's go to uh, IG markets, you know, the, the, the biggest CFD broker in the world. And what does it say? Well, they say that 71% of all their clients lose money. Uh, let's go to CMC markets, another really big broker. And I can't spell, but you know, Google is helping me. And what do they say? 73% of their clients. What about the, what about that broker? I think it's owned by Greg Seger, you know, the educator. Although I'm not sure that uh, this is official knowledge. I think it's called Capital Index, isn't it? I think so. <clears throat> so let's see, Capital Index, 83% of their clients are losing. So what's interesting from my point of view is that uh, all the amount of education in trading in the world won't really make you a profitable trader. What will make you a profitable trader is to without getting too spiritual because this, this is not what it's about but it's about um <clears throat> cultivating a an absolute unbreakable confidence and so no matter what the market throws at you you know that you'll have faith that you can make this and that you will have confidence in running your positions you see that thing about running positions that in itself is a something that very few people will have the ability to do because when they are building up a profit they will be afraid that that profit will disappear and that's a mind trick that our mind is playing at us it's it's uh look i'm just rambling here because you know i just it's what i do um but when we are sat on a profit and the profit goes from $1 to $2 to $10 to $20 to the $30, there's a threshold where we're thinking, oh, it doesn't really make any difference. But the moment that the money actually begins to, or could have potentially an impact on our financial well-being, or maybe it takes our account level over a certain threshold that we wanted to achieve. Like for example, how many times have you not been in a trade and if you close that trade then your account would get over a certain amount a certain amount that you really wanted to achieve and instead of trading the market you're now trading your account balance then you know instinctively that that's not the right thing to do and i think the, the greatest part of our journey as traders is not necessarily to master every single candlestick pattern I, I don't I don't think that that candlestick patterns is going to be the only ingredient in making us money from trading I think what we need to do is to find a quiet corner of the house or go to the beach or somewhere on a regular basis remind ourselves what it is that we are trying to achieve and then 
imagining exactly that so that we are constantly reinforced in what it is that we're trying to achieve. And it's for one of those reasons that God, I tidied up my office so much because I thought, well, if I'm going to stream, I better make sure that it looks tidy. And now I can't find anything. But I have a, I have a PowerPoint presentation. Where the hell is that? Hang on. <clears throat> so before the whole COVID, I, I used to travel to Denmark a fair bit and I would do seminars for ETX Capital. And um, the owner of ETX Capital in Denmark, his name is Jesper, he uh, has a brother who works at a, or owns a print agency. And he printed me up these, so these, these really big, uh, these really big placards. And they're, my, they're past trades. You know, some of them good, some of them bad. And so what I like to do in the morning as my preparation time is I go, all right, uh, yeah, I, I, I bought there. I, I, I held on to it. That was a good trade. All right, I, I should have been in earlier there. I was lacking confidence. It's, just, it's a sort of a, a very physical reminder of what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. And I, well, I'm not saying that this is for you, but I'm saying that it certainly has helped me. And I got, so it's, I think this is A5. So they, and they're actually quite, they're quite thick. So I have about a hundred of these. Actually, I have several hundred there. Uh, I might have leaned a little bit too much on that friendship with Jesper, thank you. But uh, it's, it's a great way of hand picking out 10 or 20 of these and going, okay, uh, here's some good trades here. Oh, I, uh, and th this is one of my favorite ones to this when I, I think I'm in a good position and let's say I'm making $20,000 or $30,000, a lot of money. And then I feel really good about myself. And then I see the market carrying on in my favor and it would have made me perhaps several hundred thousand dollars. And you, you'll feel good about making 20,000, this, that, and the other. But after a couple of hours, if that 20,000 would have been 200,000, you might not feel so good about yourself after all. Uh, there might be a, a, a degree of remorse in your in your spirit and that's that's good because then it it provokes you to think well what is it that i want to do do i do i want to be happy with my gains right here right now or do i want to remind myself that that are uh, perhaps bigger gains out there one of the questions i get frequently in the telegram group you can't see that but it's on the screen over here is um do you trade with targets and i said and i say no i i don't like to trade with targets because Say for the sake of the argument that I am buying here, and I said to you, well, we're gonna have a 20 point target. How would you feel about getting out there and then watching the market carry on, carry on, carry on? And to me, that's, that's just a no-no. I, I would rather buy at say 10 and then, and then see the market go up to 90, but I only get out at say 60. And I know what I'm talking about here is me portraying myself as if I am this immaculate trader that never makes mistakes. But one of the disadvantages of being a live stream trader and a telegram trader is that I will probably never, ever be able to do a paid for seminar again, because everybody who will see that advert that knows me going, yeah, but I know that he's not perfect all the time. And lots and lots of these seminar sellers, those gurus out there, they actually make a living from actually never having placed a trade live in their life. Whilst I mess up every single one. Just look at this morning. I'm telling, uh, I'm telling everyone that I'm, actually, I'm going long the Dow. When the reality is I'm wanting to go short, but I pressed the wrong button. So, you know, uh, and, and, and I'll, this is the last bit, and then we're going back to the charts. I can never 
trade in my underwear again. The underweartrader.com is gone. Now I have to actually I have to shave, I have to, you know, comb my hair and put on a respectable t-shirt. I can't just sit here in my sleep t-shirt. So if I ever ask for a favor, you know, a little donation or something, or, or I don't know, I wouldn't do that, but just I'm paying a big price to do this. I used to be the naked trader, but I meant the real naked trader. Sit here, butt naked and trade. A lot more information than you asked for, isn't it? Okay, let's uh, let's get back to what matters. So let's take a look at this uh, DAX pattern. And forgive me, uh, everyone, you, you just got to bear with me for the next day or two. I'm getting the hang of talking to you and looking at the chart and operating this OBS software that I <coughs> at times <coughs> so infuriatingly don't know how it's working. So I got one account over here, I got an account there, I got OBS software here, I got my Telegram console over here, and in Telegram as well, I got my my smoothie and my, <clears throat> my microphone that I'm talking about.